Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com coming to you today from the headwaters of the mighty River Nile. In order to bring you episode number one in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying, what I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I'm going to teach you in this class. Now, this is an introductory or an, uh, an overview video that is going to describe to you what we are going to do in this class, in this series of video lessons. And so it's going to be sort of an introduction so you can know what to expect in this class, know if this class is going to be a good fit for you. What my goal in this class is, is to teach you how to design in Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is free for home and hobby use from Autodesk. Okay, so you can use it for free if you're not making money on it. If you're just doing it for home hobby projects, it's free. And then what I want to teach you is how to take those designs and print them out on a 3D printer. Now, what's the motivation for me wanting to do this? The motivation is, is that we've done some pretty cool stuff on this channel with our Arduinos and our Raspberry Pis and our Jetson Nanos. We've done some pretty cool things, but we always end up with kind of a desktop breadboard and sometimes there's real interest in taking those projects to the next level where we have like a prototype that we can walk around with. Well, in those cases, we're going to need things like cases and enclosures and different mechanical elements to allow us to take it from the breadboard to more the prototype stage. Also, there's some just really cool mechanical things that you can do. Remember, we've done stuff with stepper motors, DC motors, servos, and to be able to to combine that electronic expertise we have with some mechanical expertise is going to enable, enable us to do some pretty cool things. So we're way out here in our electronic and electrical engineering skills, and we're kind of back at baby steps on the mechanical side. So we're going to try to fill in those gaps and get it to where you can do some pretty cool stuff mechanically. Now, the rationale or the reason that I'm offering this class is, is that I think most people, I know a lot of makers out there, a lot of home hobbyists will go out and buy a 3D printer. But let me tell you from my observation, this is the typical experience of a person who gets a 3D printer. First of all, you buy the printer, you then put it together, you then print the demo widgets that the demo files are provided with the printer, and you just get really, really excited about those demos. But then you really never learn how to design on your own. Maybe you go out to Thingiverse and there's some, there's some cool designs someone else has done and you download their designs and you print it, but you never really learn how to design things yourself. Maybe you've played around with Tinkercad a little bit and it's really simple to use, but then you can't do any really sophisticated designs. Or, or then maybe you've jumped into one of the AutoCAD uh, products, Autodesk products like Fusion 360, and just found that it is just absolutely impossible to learn. And so what typically happens is with a 3D printer, you'll print a few of the demo things from Thingiverse until you print your, uh, until you clog your print head or something else breaks on the printer, and then you move it over to the, what I call the the abandoned project corner of your workshop and you sort of just forget about it. You always pretend in your mind that you're going to go back and use it, but you never really get back to it. 
That's not going to happen in this class. Not on my watch. We're going to really learn how to make our 3D printers work right. We're going to really learn how to design things using Fusion 360. And then we're going to jump out and we're going to do some pretty cool projects. Does that sound neat? I hope that sounds exciting to you. Okay, so part of the problem is you never really learn how to make your, your uh, 3D printer work right. And the other thing is you really never learn how to design in CAD. And the problem that people have in learning how to do CAD is the really simple programs, like I mentioned, like uh, Tinkercad or, or SketchUp or some of those, you can draw shapes pretty easily, but you really can't go in and design any type of mechanical objects that have any type of sophistication at all. And so you can make really simple things, but not something that is very exciting. Then when you try to do AutoCAD or Fusion 360, those program those programs are hopelessly complicated and the real issue is is that there's no good instructional material out there and i will be honest with you i struggled for decades to learn Autodesk Desk CAD programming. And I would go out and I'd say, this time I'm really going to do it. And I would get the book, I would get the manual, I would get the videos, I would take the class, but I could never understand it. And kind of looking at my struggle in learning Fusion 360 or other Autodesk programs was, it was really kind of fourfold. The first problem is, is that the instructors are assuming that you are already an expert. And so they're showing you what they're doing, but they understand that they, they, they feel like, or they think that you already understand what you're talking about and what they're talking about. And if you don't understand it, then you just kind of get hopelessly lost. One of the problems is they use an unfamiliar language. They use the language of very high end uh, CAD designers and they don't define their terms. When they use these terms, they don't define them. So you, you see what they're doing, but you really don't understand what they are saying because they are using a foreign language and they don't define their terms. The third reason is, is that they really go way too fast. Okay. They go really, really way too fast and it's kind of clickety, 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 and they're using keyboard short keyboard shortcuts and you just really can't follow them. At best, what you can do is sort of, you know, pause and back up and pause and back up and you can copy what they've done and maybe you end up copying what they do and end up with the CAD file that they have, but you don't understand it to the point that you could go out and do something on your own. Okay. And so that is not going to happen in this class. In this class, I do not assume that you already have a PhD from MIT in CAD. Okay. I don't assume that. I assume that you're a smart person person and a hardworking person and a person that can listen and learn, but I don't assume that you're already an expert. Also, I remember back in the days that I was struggling to learn, and so I'm teaching you thinking of me several years ago when I didn't know anything about this. And so I'm going to take you through it step by step, and I'm going to take it take you through it slowly, and I'm going to take you through it in a way that you can understand. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to really show you, I'm going to emphasize a lot in this class, not how sophisticated of an object that I can design, but I'm going to really try to emphasize good engineering design principles and good engineering design concepts. Now, you guys that have taken some of my Python classes where we have done visual Python and we've done 3D renderings and visual Python using parameters, you guys are going to be ahead in the game because a lot of those good design principles that I used in that series of classes, we're going to be using in this series of classes as well. Okay. And finally, my gripe with a lot of the uh, CAD tutorials that are out there right now, those guys are really smart. They're like way smarter than I am and they're way more talented in CAD design than I am. But sometimes I feel like they're instructional material more than anything else. They're just kind of showing off, showing you how, you know, showing you how much they can do and how sophisticated they are and how fast they can go. And yeah, it's impressive. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a, a 
guy sitting, you know, watching a jet fighter pilot. Yeah, it's impressive, but you would not be able to get in that jet fighter and you would not be able to do those same maneuvers. And so I want to really keep it simple. I want to keep it basic and I want to make sure that you are learning good design and good engineering principles as we go through this. And again, it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be project based. Does that sound good? You guys leave comments down below because right now I'm just starting this series of lessons. And so I need your feedback. What do you want me to do? What are other problems that you've seen in this area? So give me feedback so that this series of classes will be as useful as possible to you. Does that sound good? Okay. So two things that we're going to be covering in this class. It's going to be Fusion 360 and Fusion 360 targeted towards 3D printers. Now let's talk about the 3D printers. I'm going to show you the 3D printer that I am using, but if you already have a 3D printer, by all means, use it. Go over to your, your abandoned project corner of your workshop, get your 3D printer out, dust it off, get it set back up, and you can use that. Okay, if you don't have a 3D printer and you're gonna go ahead and get one, then life is gonna be a whole lot easier if we are working on the same 3D printer because then the problems I'm having will likely be the same problems you're having and we can kind of go through this thing together. So without further ado, let me show you the 3D printer that I have selected to use for this uh, for this series of lessons. And what we will be using is we will be using the most excellent Creality, uh, Creel, that's a hard word to say, Creality Ender 3 version 2 3D printer with the upgraded structure design and the silent motherboard and the mean well power supply. Okay. Now down in the description, there is a link over to Amazon where you can get this exact printer that I'm using. And the thing is this printer is pretty affordable as far as 3D printers go. It's $279 uh, as far as when I'm making this video. Crazy prices. Don't yell at me if you take this class three months later and the price has gone up. But at the point that I am offering the class and making these videos, the price presently is $279 on Amazon. Okay. Uh, use the link, use the affiliate link down below to hop over to Amazon and buy this printer if you don't have a 3D printer already. Now, why did I choose this 3D printer? I think this is probably my sixth pre 3D printer and I've had 3D printers that have been anywhere in price from about $250 all the way up to seven or $8,000. So how did I choose this one? Well, first of all, I chose this one because it will be affordable to the most people, right? The higher a price of printer that I suggest, the fewer the people that will be able to afford to do this. So I tried to really get something that is a rock solid printer, something that has a large user base so that we benefit from a lot of people out there using it. So if we run into a problem, likely we're going to be able to find a forum or support port post that will help us get over that problem. So there's a large user break base. It's a low cost on this printer. And then the other thing that I have found using printers from several hundred dollars to many thousands of dollars is really the main difference is those very expensive printers maybe can get a little finer resolution or a little finer detail in the prints or a little smoother edges on the prints. But really, I've found that those expensive printers have the same problems that the inexpensive printers have. And, and there's just something about 3D printing that when you get into it, you've got to ex expect some problems. And like the number one problem that you have with 3D printers is, is that your print does not adhere to the print table. It doesn't adhere to the base that you're printing on. And halfway through the print, it starts curling up or it pops off. And then you come in and you've got a good, got a big mess. The number one problem is prints don't adhere to the print bed, okay, the print platform. Uh, the second 
problem is that you do things to make them adhere and then they stick so tightly that you can't get them off after the print is done. You can't get them off and then you're trying to knock them off. You end up breaking something trying to get the print off the base. So kind of getting that sweet spot to where it adheres firmly enough that it finishes the print but then is relatively easy to remove. And we'll be talking about some print techniques that will allow you to do that. The other uh, kind of big problem that you can end up with with a 3D printer is a lot of times if you're not careful you can clog the print head and then when you clog the print head maybe you try to clean it out but if you don't get the print head completely unblocked you have sort of a partial block print head which then leads to all types of difficulty when you're printing and so again you just get frustrated you throw the printer away and so I really want to adjust those three uh, I want to address those three issues as I go through these classes and like I say those issues I had those same issues on printers that cost six and seven and eight thousand dollars, and so the problem doesn't get any lesser when you spend more on the on the printer. And so I think this will be a, a neat one for us to uh, go through, guys. I already have my printer, and let me show you. I haven't put it together yet, but let me see if I can show. Uh, let me see if I can show you the printer here. And one of the challenges that I'm going to have. Uh, Probably in the next lesson, probably in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this printer together. And kind of one of the biggest challenges I have is to give you a good view where you can see what I'm doing. Now, if you look in front of me, I've got all my studio monitors and all my studio gear, so I can't have the camera sitting in front of me doing a straight on shot because all of my studio gear is in the way of the build. And so that kind of camera angle just won't work. And so what I have is kind of like a back, my, the camera is back over my shoulder sitting, uh, shooting over my shoulder. So as you look at this view here, it's like it's coming from my eyes. So you're seeing it not from the eyes of someone sitting in front of me in the audience, but you're sort of seeing it from my eyes. Okay, does that make sense? And I really want to get a good angle on this because some of the lessons I did on the, in the past, like I think it was this Elegoo smart card that I did, I had a camera angle that for some reason made people nauseous when they would watch it, they would want to vomit. Okay, so people were calling me, telling me they were vomiting watching my video. And what I'd done was I'd kind of gone overhead and to the front so that you could sort of see it from that angle, but the person was putting themselves in the perspective of my eyes and then it made them nauseous that what they were seeing was not what they would expect. I've got another camera angle here and this is sort of in front sort of in front shooting down. And so this would be a camera angle that if you were standing in front of me, standing up in front of me, over me, looking down, this is what you would see. Okay. And this will probably go to this every once in a while. This was the camera angle that on the Elegoo smart car made people ill. But if you just understand that you're standing in front of me and you're looking down, then maybe that would help you get perspective. And then you could sort of, you know, see me building things here. This is a really nice camera here. That's a good camera angle. And then I think this one here, also the over the shoulder shot should, uh, should work pretty well. But you guys, I'm gonna be making this assembly video really quickly. So please go ahead now and be giving me your comments about what you think would work best and what you would like to see in my assembly. Also, what you guys need to do is you need to go ahead and order your printer if you don't have one so that in next week's lesson, hopefully you'll already have your printer ready to go and we can kind of build this thing together. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, if you already have a printer, definitely use the printer that you already have. If you can scrape this coin together, if you can scrape these coins together to, to get this, go ahead and order it. Now, I know a lot of you that take my classes might be very limited in your resources or very limited in your budget. Still, take the class. If you cannot afford the printer, take the class. The class is free, right? So take the class and the uh, Autodesk Fusion 360, the download and the use for home use is free. And so you can still learn how to design, okay? And then figure out a way maybe to get it printed. 
A lot of communities have 3D printers like at a library. And so look in your area and see if there's a 3D printer that you could use that's being made available by some sort of public institution. Or there would be services where you could design something and then upload it and then a service would print it and then send it to you for a fee. Okay, so there's a lot of different options, even if you can't afford the $279 that it costs to buy this most excellent printer. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the printer. The other thing that I want to do today is it takes a little bit of time to get Fusion 360 installed. And so that's the other thing that you need to do. Now, don't go away. Don't go away and build your printer. Okay, what are you supposed to do? Your homework for this week is number one, order the printer if you're able to. Your homework number two is to go ahead and download and install Fusion 360. And I'll show you a little bit about that. I'm not going to go through the whole install because it's kind of slow to download and kind of slow to make it work the first time, but I'll kind of get you started in that. So next week when we have our lesson, you've ordered your printer, if at all possible, you have Fusion 360 installed. And then the third thing is you've left me feedback of what you want to see in this class, what your expectations are, what I can do to make this class as valuable as possible to you. Okay, we've talked a lot about 3D printers and about the limitation of instructional material on auto on uh, auto desktop of pro, uh, programs. And so let's jump in and let me see if I can get you started on installing Fusion 360. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're going to come over here and on the most excellent search engine, DuckDuckGo, we're going to search on the term download Fusion 360 for home use. Very important for home use. Okay. And then I don't click on the ad there. I come down here and it says Fusion 360 for personal use, Fusion 360 from Autodesk. So I'm going to click on that. And as we are waiting here, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Okay. I thought I clicked on it. Okay, there it is. Okay, and so what we see here is Fusion 360 for personal use. That's what we want. No, thank you. I won't participate. And then there's the free for qualified hobbyist users. And you can read the term. You need to read the terms of service and make sure that you are using this legally. But me not being a lawyer, I would just summarize it by saying if you're using it at home and you're having fun with it and you're not making money, it's not a problem. You need to read those terms of service more carefully if you start doing a hobby that turns into something that's interesting, that turns into something you're going to sell. You need to go in and look and see if you need to actually buy the software. So then you're going to come in and you're going to say get started. Started, and then when you say get started, it wants you to sign in. Okay. And then when you're going to sign in, likely you haven't done it before. So you're new to Autodesk. So you're going to need to create a, an account. Now, what I will say is when you go to create an account, okay, when you go to create an account, it, uh, it does not ask you for a credit card. I repeat, it does not ask you for a credit card. It needs your name, your email, and then it needs a password and you're just agreeing to the terms of service. Okay, that's okay. And then once you have your account, then you'll come to sign in and then it is going to ask you to sign in. And then usually it has some sort of two-step verification to sign in. And so it might want to text you, a, it might want to text you a, a uh, number or something like that to uh, to get it started. And then when you get here, you have to type in the information like your name, where you're from, and then you agree to the uh, terms of service. And then it says, I would like to, uh, you have to decide. Ah, somehow I went back. Okay, let's see if I can move forward again there. I don't know why it went back. But basically then you should get the uh, you should get the download button. All right, I think I didn't put in all the information so I, uh, so it doesn't like it. But you would click next and then you would look down in the uh, you would look down in the bottom 
of your browser after you click download and you'll get a little download icon and then when you click on that download icon it'll start downloading and uh, you know that can take a little bit of time because it's a pretty big program then the first time you launch it it's going to want you to log in again anytime you use the program it's going to want you to log in and then uh, after you log in then you'll end up with the start screen don't start trying to design. Wait till it'll probably be about lesson number three. Okay, this thing is this thing is firing up. Uh, it'll probably be about lesson number three where I'll actually take you in and start showing you how to design. But I would rather you not try to fool around with it. I would rather us go through together so that you can learn good design principles, good engineering approaches to doing this uh, to doing this CAD design. And so get it installed. Make sure that you can open the program and then about lesson number three, I'll actually show you, uh, you know, where we're going, you know, I'll start showing you how to design. So this lesson has been an overview for this entire class that I will be offering. Lesson number two is going to be putting your 3D printer together. And then lesson number three is when we're going to dive in, when we are going to actually dive into the most excellent Fusion 360. So guys, again, really seriously, leave me feedback and let me know if this sounds like an interesting class or if there's no interest, maybe I should just go do something else and not, you know, I want to teach a class that no one's interested in. But if you guys are excited, leave a comment down below. I'm in. Okay. Then also leave me comments as far as things like what you would like to see me cover what are things that I should be aware of? Give me your feedback. And then number three, tell me what you would like to do. Tell me why you're interested in Fusion 360, why you're interested in learning CAD. Does that sound good? Guys, I'm looking forward to this. I have not done any 3D printing in probably two years, and I'm really excited to get back into it. We've done such great things with artificial intelligence, with Arduinos, with circuits, with all types of different things. I really want to take that work to the next level by being able to go in and combine it with mechanical elements. And so I am just crazy excited about this series of classes, this series of classes, and I hope you are as excited about taking these classes as I am about making the classes. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. When you give me a thumbs up and leave a comment, it helps me with the old YouTube juice, and that means that this video will be offered and shown to more people, and that's important because the world needs more engineers and more people making things and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.